What's up, Copy Squad? Kyle Milligan of KyleTheWriter.com here, and we are about to move into part two of the Heat Seekers promo breakdown. So if you haven't seen part one yet, I would recommend that you start there. We go over the headline and the beginning of the lead. In this video, we're going to finish the lead and get right up to the body copy. I'm going to show you the line and the piece of the promo that actually makes this thing viable and what would happen if they didn't do it and how it would kill the promo. And then I'm also gonna show you the most crucial copywriting mistake that you can make, and they actually make it in the worst possible place, in my opinion, uh, in the lead. Now in the lead is where you want to build the greed glands, they call it. They want your prospects salivating them, the reader like, oh, I want this, I want this. How can I get it? And they have all their questions, and then you spend the body copy breaking down those objections and figuring that out and overcoming all that. But in the lead, you're just supposed to hype, hype, hype. And you'll see in this video where they, I think, mess that up in a pretty big way. But yeah, if you haven't seen part one, watch that first. If you've seen part one, welcome and enjoy. All right, so moving along. I owe my success to something I learned from our natural pastime. So he's gonna tie this to baseball somehow. You see, I don't just watch baseball like everyone else. I examine it, scrutinize, study it, obsess. Since my 21st birthday, I've been to a lot of games. I learned every team. I can give you name, uniform, number. So he's really obsessed with baseball. How has baseball made me? That's your... I, I don't know what the call would call it. I guess it's not, a, it's not a true objection, but it's a question. Uh, has to do with one man, Billy Bean. So Watch this pattern. You're going to get objection, claim, Proof, benefit. I'll write it over here. Benefit. And again, uh, this is pretty typical, but it won't always happen. But this is what I'm kind of expecting already, and I've I'm I'm not read this yet, so this is all new to me, too. Name me Rainbow. In 2011, the crackpots in Hollywood made a movie about him called Moneyball, starring Brad Pitt. Probably seen it. I haven't. If you haven't, the new story, the story is now legendary. Okay. 20 years ago, Outfielder named Billy Bean was hired to take over as general manager of Oakland A's first team. He's given a possible task to recruit a team of players that could win games with a budget one-third the size of every other team in the league. Bean couldn't afford to recruit the heavy hitters, the guys who actually fill ballparks. So instead, he hired a statistician from Harvard to help him identify the most underrated, underexposed, underappreciated players in the league by using something called sabermetrics. Okay, so I get the feeling that this is going to be somewhat related to our magic bullet where we're going to learn that you can use sabermetrics to find underrated, underexposed, underappreciated stocks or probably options for the back end to make big gains fast. Derived from the acronym SABER, Society of American Baseball Research, sabermetrics are calculations that reveal hidden strengths and weaknesses of a player. This is way too complicated. The point of something this complicated is to basically kind of tell you you can't do this by yourself. Only us super smart people can tell you how to do this. All right. For decades, Sabre Metrics was ignored and mocked by our enemy, the elites. The idea of recruiting players based – so, all right, let me, let me stop there too. So what I've said is we've established that we have an enemy, is the, is the elites. We don't like those guys. So what we can do now is position that hey man, if this seems stupid to you, well, or unlikely or anything, like you, can, you can take anything now and frame it as, yeah, you know who didn't like this? The elites. So whenever you do that now, all of a sudden, you're kind of on the side of sabermetrics. You're almost like rooting for it. Isn't that kind of weird? So anyway, um, the idea of recruiting players based on a bunch of calculations is foreign is reading a road map in Chinese. All right, cool. Team owners relied on tobacco-chewing scouts to go to high school and college games with their little clipboards and recruit guys who could hit the hardest, run the fastest, and throw the farthest. But Billy Bean changed everything. Using sabermetrics, he helped the Oakland A's reach the playoffs in four consecutive years, 2000-2003. And during 2002, his team won 20 games in a row, setting a record. At that point, sabermetrics caught on like wildfire. Okay. So this thing is proven. Still waiting to see how it makes some money. Um, you could kind of call this value. Like you're just kind of getting taught something. Like you're getting a little bit of schooling here. Oh, sabermetrics, I know something now. Then 2014, Houston Astros rebuilt their team using it. Sports Illustrated did a cover story. 
Okay, so these are more proof points. One, two, fast forward three years. Uh, Astros one. And this means squat to you. So this is proof. Proof. This is all proof that sabermetrics is useful. Why? Why do I care? Um, this may not mean squat to you. See, he even addresses that. For most people, baseball is nothing but a bunch of grown men standing around spinning and adjusting their jock straps. They'd rather watch paint dry. I'm not trying to convince you to love baseball or even watch it. This is about showing you how some sabermetrics, of course, former delinquent with rap sheet for miles, undefeated. Okay. Several years ago, I figured out something that, as far as I know, no one else ever could, and that is how to use sabermetrics to make money. Okay, so we kind of saw that coming, right? Let's see. What else can we try to glean from this? Oh, here we go. This is really good. Because now it's like... It's planting the seed that you can only get this secret here. This new novel way to make money fast. Nobody else is talking about it. That's one of the reasons that you haven't heard about it yet. Because only I know. Only I have this secret. Like, that is so important. Like, if you're going to pay $2,000 for something, you need to know that you can't just go next door and get it for 50 bucks. But only I know this secret. Listen to me. Only I know this secret. It has to be in your copy in some fashion, right? Especially if you're going to charge two grand. So no one else ever could. Because no one else likes baseball the way I like baseball. So, bam. There's like your, I don't know, you can call it a hook or angle. Um, you're kind of starting to feel what's happening here. So, uh, it's kind of like his secret. I mean, there's, there's a million different things you can kind of say here. Oh, I thought of another cool thing. Uh, we can, instead of calling this value, we can call it a key... Insight. I, I saw that from uh, Jake Hoffberg, I think. But yeah, he calls it like a key insight where like this is like the discovery story. Okay, moving along. Sorry, I'm getting, getting caught up. All right, specifically, by using one calculation ripped straight out of Billy Bean's Moneyball playbook and adopted to the stock market, using this single sabermetric calculation, I can identify in seconds. Stocks, there they are. I knew it. Underrated, underexposed, underappreciated. That buying them is no different than buying a signed uh, Mickey Mantle card for $5 at a yard sale. What a great analogy. Actually ties it back into baseball very well. Check. <laughs> I just like scribbling on this thing. This was, that was a useless note. Only an idiot would say no. You may want to grab a pen and get out a notepad or record this next bit on your phone. That's great. I don't know if I'd want to tell someone to do that because I don't want them to stop reading. But do whatever you need to to process this information. Right now, for the first time, and probably last time ever, I'm going to show you how to use sabermetrics. Boy, if that isn't some scarcity right here, boy. Probably the last time ever. You don't get another shot at this. Dude, pay attention. Don't go away. This is a good bribe. So... To outperform, outsmart, and outmaneuver the greatest financial minds working today. That's good. Um, when I'm done, you'll have all the knowledge. This is the bribe. This is like he's really going in on a bribe. When I'm done, you'll have all the knowledge you need to break free from any of the circus strategies you're using now. Boom, just played down the other ones. And instead, get the chance to start winning on every trade like I do. No matter what, you will look back at this moment as a defining point in your life. Holy crap. See these formulas? Sabermetric calculations. In reality, there are 230 in total. Together, they can tell you anything and everything you want to know about any baseball player from his walk percentage and strikeout percentage to his speed score, clutch score, and isolated power. Okay. Um, let me pause here. Because this actually goes in, in line with old Clayton's... Uh, five-step thing here. Bribe him to read this, deliver value, present your big promise. So this is also, let's say this is 
the big promise, right? Because we definitely saw the value. So remember, I'm gonna show you my, my note cards really quick here. These old things. Grab them by the eyeballs. Some coffee stain right there, complimentary. Support and expand your headline. That, I mean, he's supporting and expand that he's a whiskey drinking, baseball loving, redneck some bitch. And uh, he's got all these trades, right? He's supporting and expand on that. Credibility, nonstop, man. He went from delinquent to uh, running a baseball field, right? Bribe him to read this. He's done that a couple times, right? We got a bribe here, like, this is the last time I can show you this. What was the bribe we had up here? My, my computer won't keep up while I'm trying to uh, record. It's like going so slow. Ow, objection claim. Okay, so this was the proof that we we're talking about. Ah, so that was objection. There's the claim. I skipped right over it. Here's the proof. And then I didn't tell you. There it is. Benefit. See, all this stuff is a pattern. Like, once you start to recognize these patterns, all you gotta do is kind of figure out your angle. Like, this guy's a baseball loving redneck. Boom. Use this pattern. Change the story to whatever you wanna do, man. All right. Prime to read this. Talk about that. Deliver some value. Uh, so, this would be like your value slash key insight. It's like, oh, saver metrics. Cool. Step six. Present your big promise. Let's see. What I'm really surprised about is, here's a big promise right here. Now, I think one of the reasons we haven't seen a lot of numbers and figures come up is twofold. One, these are, right now, things are a little bit difficult for making like giant claims. Like, he, legally speaking, we're kind of getting in a place with like Google and Facebook and all that stuff where you don't want to go out there and make crazy claims anymore. Uh, so he made a claim for 70% and that's actually pretty mild for a back-end claim. He said, I've made 70%, a whopping 70%. Like I said, that's a really mild claim and he's not really harping on the money as much as he's hyping up the risk relief. Um, like this is pretty much the secret makes you invincible. All right, so remember that like we're starting to draw common threads here that we can we can keep moving along. Okay, let's go back to here. Step seven, prove your point. Okay, so that's why I kind of wanted to pause there because we're at step seven where we prove our point. After you make your big promise, from this moment on, like, uh, we're no longer in the lead, okay? So we've done all these things to kind of get you hyped, get you salivating, and now you have this idea like, wow, if I had this secret, I could be invincible, pick underrated trades, and make money fast. That's that's the lead, and that's what it's supposed to do. The lead is supposed to create a burning desire and for you to like learn what the secret is. Um, let me do something here. I have it in my reading list on my website. Oh, here website, and there there will be a link in the uh, description. I don't even need to write this, but I'm writing it anyway. KyleTheWriter.com. Can you read that? That's me. All right. The other thing. Um, so, great leads. One of the best books on writing leads out there. And do I have it here? It's on my reading list on my website, but here it is. Great leads. Read this thing, man. I mean, if, you want, if you're serious about copywriting, uh, go to my reading list and buy it from my affiliate link because then I make like 30 cents or something. And, you know, I'm not selling a course or product or anything, so I need to make something off of this. All right, cool. So remember to put a link to Great Leads. Cool. All right, moving along. Um, so we're done with the lead here. We're about to move into the body copy. This is a great point for me to pause. Is there a pause button on this? Uh, 